Hi folks, this is Dave Higgins. This tutorial is going to be on how to use the layers in relationship to making digital paintings. The first thing we need to talk about is, is how a painting is constructed. Most good paintings are made of building up layers of detail, where you paint one item over another item to create depth and interest in the image. The layers of palette will allow us to do this. But we also, have, in this situation where we're painting from a photograph, we have to have a source, a place to draw our information from, and that is going to be called the source layer. Now, we need to set that layer up. So the first thing we need to do is click on what we're going to have for our source layer, unlock it, and I'm going to retitle it source layer. Now we're going to draw information from this layer. We're never going to actually put any information on the layer. So we're going to want to lock it. But before we lock it, we want to be able to see what's happening underneath it. So we're going to come on up and we're going to take the opacity down a little bit so we can see through it. So it's a little bit transparent. And once you've done that, we're going to want to lock that layer because you're going to be turning it on and off all the time and you don't want to inadvertently end up drawing on your source layer. Now we need to add some blank layers to build up our painting. You can make as many as you want. I usually start with four or five. I'm going to drag my source layer back to the top. Traditionally, many painters put an undercoating of color on their canvas so that when they're working where areas where the paint does not cover all of the canvas the white doesn't show through but this other color does the other thing it does is it will add a the characteristic of whatever that color is to the painting so if we used a blue under underpainting the painting would be cool but we want this to be a warm painting, so we're going to use an orange. Okay, I almost always use this because I like my paintings to have more warmth than coolness. So I'm going to click on the color swap here, and you can see where I've picked it. Say OK. Make sure the bottom layer is selected because we want this layer underneath all of the rest of them. Click on the paint bucket, dump it in there. Whoops, wrong one. So we'll just undo that step move that color back to the foreground. There we go. We can turn this on and off. You can already see how dramatically it's affecting the characteristics of what's going to be the final painting. Now we're going to click on the next layer up. This is where we're going to do our roughest painting because we want to try and break up the detail. So I'm going to take my brush, set my brush size up around 100, and I'm just going to Start really roughing up the image. The whole object of this layer is to destroy detail, to try and break the detail up. And I'm just doing this really roughly. This is not just so we can see the effect. Now we can't really see what we've done until we shut off the top layer, the source layer. And now we can see what we've done. And you can see how the yellow shows through in the areas that don't have any paint on it. Now I'm going to just go on up to the next layer because I'm, I'm more interested in showing you how the layers work than how the painting works. So we're going to click on layer 3. We're going to go back up and we're going to reduce the size of our brush. Come back over, turn on the source layer, and come in and just bring in detail where we want it to be and let the rest of it be rough. I really like the brush strokes, so I usually try and move those around. So let's turn off the source layer. And if we turn off bottom layer, we can see that's the detail we just added on this layer. And when we combine the two together, we get this. Now, you don't have to work from the source layer. As you can see, the source layer is off. 
Now if I take my brush and I come in here and work, I'm only now working with the paint that's on this layer. And I can go in and work, take things out that I don't want to be really visual in the picture, just to clean it up. I can add a little bit more abstract shapes and lines in here, move things around a bit. I don't have to worry too much because I can still come back in and bring detail in where I want it to be by just turning the source layer back on, coming back in, and I want to redefine these lines here a little bit so they're going to show up. Let's turn it back off and we can see what we're doing. Now I'm going to go up the next layer and I'm going to reduce the brush size again. Remember, the smaller the brush is, the more detail that we're going to be bringing in to the image. I'm going to come on up now and just work these rivets, work the edge of the boat. And I don't want the numbers in there. And if I do have them in there, I want them really broken up and light. So I'm just going to leave that. Now I'm just going to come down and work the edges of the boat. I want the shadow line to be strong, so I'm going to go over it. I want the edge between the water. I want this ripple. I want to bring in this relationship down here a little bit. Now we can turn the source layer off. If I want to see what I've done, I can turn this layer on and off. And you can see how I've defined the lines a little bit better, the edges. So I'm going to do some more work on the edges, turn it back on. Now I can pull the black in if I want to pull the dark color in to help define the other edge. So I'm just going to work the darker into there. Let's see what it looks like. And you can see how we'll pull that edge out. Now you can see right in here, I don't want that little dark area there. So I'm going to turn the source layer back on and I'm going to paint out to the edge and that will bring that information into that area. You see how I picked that up. Well, looking at it, I think I want to do a little bit more work in here. So I'm going to turn the source layer back on, come back in, work that edge some more, work this edge out here. I think I want to see more of the, get a relationship between the pier here. I like that yellow reflection in there, so I'm going to bring that up in. And let's take a look. And we can see how it brought that information in. Now I really, this is a little too muddy in here for me, so with the source layer off, I'm just going to use the paint I have here and try and blend that yellow further down into that area. I also don't want quite as much green there, so I'm going to pull that in. I'm just going to get rid of those numbers because I find them distracting. There we go. So you can see you can work on the layer and work with the paint that's already on that layer. and actually do the painting the way you want it to be, ignoring the source image. So come back over, turn it on. Now I'm going to shut this off and I'm going to go down through each layer so we can see how the painting has been built up. And this is what adds depth and interest to a painting is working it up in layers because you construct it and you get deeper, better color, more interest. Turn this back on. Now the other thing that can be done with the layers palette is that we can put adjustment layers in here and actually adjust the tonality, color, and value of the image. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add an adjustment layer. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go to color balance which will allow me to change how the color is working in the image. I'm going to just drop it in here so it's in that same palette. So we have the three colors, but we also have shadow, highlight, and midtone. I usually start with the shadow. So I'm going to click there, and I'm going to add yellow to the shallow, shadow. And we can see how that's warming up the sky and stuff in the reflection. So I don't want to go too far. If I go the other way, I can make it blue. So I'm going to put it right about there. Now we can also adjust the red. And now we've really made it a much warmer image. 
So let's go on up and uh, go to the highlight. I usually don't do much with the midtone. And again, I want to bring the yellow up. There we go. Now it's really starting to pop. It's got a lot of glow to it. So let's go back to our layers. And just like everything else, we can turn that layer on and off to see the difference in the image. Now let's say I wanted more of the blue in the sky to come back. Well, you have this masking layer here. If we click on the masking layer, and we have black selected. I'm going to select a gray because the darker the color is, the more it works. I'm just going to go on over and get a regular brush up here. And I'm going to make it large. And again, I'm going to go with the brush that we've been using. Oh, not quite that large. Down like this. And and now I can bring back some of that blue. And you can see how it's appearing in the mask layer. Now I can turn that on and off. And I prefer it with the uh, blue blot in. But you see, we thought that looked great before. But when we go in and adjust the color, we can change the power of the image. So this is an overview of what we can do with the layers palette. Um, I recommend you go with a underpainting layer. We can see where that yellow shows through in the unpainted areas. And if we didn't have that, those areas would be white. Then use your coarse brush, break up your detail, go to a finer brush and decide what detail you want to bring back in. Bring in that detail. Then go in and refine detail in smaller areas. When you get it looking the way you want, do a color adjustment, and there's your painting. So this is an overview of what we can do with the layers. A lot more can be done with the layers, and we'll cover the layers in greater detail in other tutorials. Hope you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm.